Episode 208, Long Night, Part 3. But many wolf beast men were surrounding the tribal head. Even if he was considered formidable among the three striped beast men, he couldn't shake them off soon enough. Despair welled up in Stephanie's eyes as she watched her father get farther and farther away from her. Suddenly, the body holding Stephanie shook. Immediately following that, she fell to the ground with a thud. Raising her head, she saw a tiger fighting the man carrying her earlier. In their human form, wolf beast men had weaker combat powers, so he hurriedly transformed into his beast form. The two beasts pounced at each other simultaneously. At this moment, time seemed to slow down. The tiger beast man battling the wolf appeared particularly valiant, and every piece of fur on his body exuded charm. Stephanie's heart throbbed. She blurted out, If you defeat him, I'll become mates with you. Bang. The tiger beast man easily pinned the wolf to the ground and snapped his neck with a bite. The tiger beast man walked to Stephanie's side and let out a low growl from his tiger mouth. Really? Stephanie cocked her head sideways and looked at him for a while, then suddenly widened her eyes. It's you? Miles finally arrived, albeit too late. As he flew, he reached out and prepared to catch Stephanie. The tiger beast man turned his head and got into an attacking stance. Stephanie hurriedly raised both hands at Miles and said, He's here to save me. Miles grabbed Stephanie's wrists with his claws and soared to the skies, then lowered his head to look at the tiger beast man on the ground. For some reason, he found this tiger to be an eyesore. In the water hole, bubbles sank one after the other, forming a dense mountain at the bottom. It was pitch dark in the water, save for a pearl giving off a glow in the far distance. Tens of females had their gazes riveted upon that light source, unable to shift their eyes away. The same went for Blair at the bottom of the pile. In the darkness, like the way moths were drawn to light, Everyone was staring at that smudge of brightness as though it contained all their hope. Only when all the females came down did Caspian dive into the water. Blair. Blair sensed her bubble move, then Caspian's voice entered her ears. Have all the women come into the water? She asked. Caspian replied with a smile. Hmm. Is your heart put to ease now? Blair smiled and responded with an... Hmm. It's so dark in here. Is Roger outside? Can you get him to bring the luminescent balls that's in our home? We can't see anything down here. Okay. Caspian agreed immediately. He floated to the surface and shortly after came back with a bundle of light. Although the luminescent balls weren't eye-catching during the day, it had the effect of turning night into day in this pitch-dark environment. The entire waterhole instantly brightened up, revealing the panicked and horrified expressions of the females. Blair looked for Donna and Zeke while she was in the bubble, hand propped against the bubble as she rolled towards them. The minute the bubble started moving, the little cubs got excited. Thinking that their mommy was playing a game with them, they started running about haphazardly. Roar! A bubble rolled about haphazardly as it got pulled in different directions. Blair lowered her head and pushed at the bubble for a while, but didn't manage to advance. Instead, the bubble rolled backward due to the force exerted by the cubs, causing her to do a reverse somersault. Roar! The leopard cubs cheered even more merrily now. Even Caspian couldn't help but laugh. Lying at the bottom of the waterhole, Blair's body kept shaking as the bubble moved. She smacked Eldest's head in annoyance and said, Stop fooling around. Take me to Donna. How? The leopard cubs obeyed the command and instantly ran in the same direction. The strength of the three leopards caused the bubble to roll speedily. Lying on the ground, Blair nearly did a headstand. In the end, she gave up and got up to roll the bubble together with her little ones. The bubbles in their way were squeezed away amid the female's shrieks. 
The small mountain of bubbles fell apart and scattered all over the bottom of the water hole. Sorry, sorry, Blair apologized as she moved. Looking at how enthusiastic her cubs were, she reckoned she wouldn't be able to stop even if she wanted to. If she had known this would happen, she would have asked Caspian to help. Blair said to everyone, Don't be scared. This bubble is very sturdy. Even if we wish to, we won't be able to break it. Don't be scared. Only then did the females ease up a little. Seeing as she was about to collide with Donna's bubble, Blair hurriedly said, Hurry up and stop. Stop! The leopard cubs ran a few steps excitedly and only halted as they were about to collide with Donna's bubble. But due to inertia, the bubble still ended up knocking into it. Zeke pressed his hand upon the ground and managed to steady the two bubbles. Due to the same inertia, now the leopard cubs were sent flying to the back when they stopped abruptly, ultimately collapsing into a pile. Howl! Blair smacked their little heads one by one. Mischievous! Caspian swam over and glanced at Zeke. You need to be careful. The bubble cannot withstand the claws of a male. Unlike how harmless he sounded when he was talking to Blair, he spoke to Zeke coldly. Hmm. Zeke responded in a deep voice. Donna, lying in his arms, was as quiet as a wooden doll. She pressed tightly against her mate, and from time to time she would murmur, Don't leave me. Are we safe here? Blair went to the edge of the bubble and poked at it. Are Donna and her babies okay? Zeke lowered his head and looked at his spouse and cubs, his resilient face turning gentle. They're fine. Newly born tiger cubs were just like leopard cubs, with red bodies and sparse, light-colored fur that didn't sport tiger prints. The tiger cubs were soundly asleep, their little tummies undulating as they breathed. Next to them was a pile of their fetal membranes. What heartened Blair the most was that their mouths were wide like a hippopotamus's. Did you see the tiger cubs? Blair called for her leopard cubs to come over and take a look. Roar? Third scratched at the bubble. So tiny. Having taken a look at Donna, nothing worried Blair anymore. Then she looked left and right. Stephanie, where are you? She'd nearly forgotten that Stephanie felt traumatized by Caspian. Furthermore, a person who nearly drowned would typically have a phobia of water. She must be frightened, right? No one responded to her in the water for a long while. Panicking, Blair got to her feet and looked around, raising her voice. Stephanie? Huh? Stephanie replied as though she was shaken out of her sleep. Blair, is that you? Relief washed over her. She found Caspian and asked for a wooden rod mounted with luminescent balls, then rolled towards Stephanie. Why didn't you reply to me when I called out to you just now? I thought you hadn't come down. Having been taught a lesson by their mommy, the leopard cubs were much more obedient this time. They cautiously rolled with their mother. Very quickly... Blair caught sight of Stephanie squatting in her bubble and seeming out of sorts. What's the matter? Blair asked, puzzled. She wondered if Miles had upset her again. Holding a bag of horned melons, Stephanie lowered her gaze and said in a soft voice, He's back. Who's back? The male whom I canceled my spousal relationship with. Blair froze and reflexively looked in Donna's direction. What happened to Donna made it hard for others not to be wary of those feral males, although they seemed incapable of doing anything to harm their ex-spouses. Blair pondered for a moment, but was still reminded. You have to be careful of him. Hmm. Stephanie nodded. Seeing the bag in Stephanie's hands, Blair asked with uncertainty... Are those horned melons inside? You haven't eaten them? Stephanie forced herself to stop thinking about those vexing matters. Pinching the fruits in the bag, she leaned towards the side of the bubble near Blair and whispered, 
What am I to do if I go into heat after eating them? Um, you're right. Blair felt helpless. On the land, the two tribes were still locked in a fierce battle. Most of the beastmen were gathered around the waterhole, biting and fighting each other. Some wolf beastmen even went into the tree holes with no beastmen keeping a watch over, in the hopes of getting lucky. A wolf beast man sniffed the surroundings of a large tree with the tree hole, and after confirming the scent of a female in there, entered from the first floor. Time passed quietly for a few seconds, then all of a sudden a black figure was sent flying out from the second story of the tree hole. Bang! A wolf fell onto the ground and stopped moving. Roar? This eerie scene attracted the attention of several wolf beast men. They looked at each other, and one of the more muscular wolf beast men lightened his footsteps and transformed into a human, then climbed up the tree and entered from the third story of the tree hole. The same quietness ensued for a few seconds before another loud thud was heard. Out flew a wolf beast man from the second story of the tree hole once more. The hairs on the backs of those wolves outside stood up as a chill entered their pores of their fur and seeped into their bones. They walked over to their dead companions and sniffed and scratched at them. Though he had gone up in his human form, he had died in his beast form. That could only mean that some danger had made him change forms all of a sudden, making him transform into a wolf against his will. But still he wasn't able to escape his fate. The bones all over his body were crushed, and all that was left of his corpse was a limp pile of flesh. This time, another few wolf beast men noticed something going on here. Thinking they had the advantage of numbers, a few of them edged closer to the large tree at the same time and entered the tree hole one by one. Bang, thud, bang, thud. However many went in, all were sent flying out. They slammed onto the ground, their corpses looking identical to that of their previous two comrades, and some even had their bones crushed into finer bits this time. Suddenly, the fur of the wolf beast men outside exploded. Letting out sharp and horrified howls, they instantly turned their heads and ran out of the village like a bunch of lunatics. Without female safety to worry about, the tiger tribe instantly gained the upper hand, they gathered around the waterhole, forming a resilient and indestructible wall around it. They merely heard the strange howls of a few wolf beast men, and all of a sudden, the wolf beast men battling them intensely turned their heads and started sprinting off. The tiger beast men were puzzled. Nonetheless, everyone rejoiced at having chased away the intruders. After the battle, blood was seen all over the place. The corpses of 20 other wolf beast men were strewn across the ground, and the tiger beast men also lost a few of their own. Unwilling for the females to see such a brutal scene, the male beast men quietly cleaned up the battlefield before going to the water hole to bring the females back up. Caspian spun the water wheel at the bottom of the water hole and said, Thankfully it wasn't damaged. I want to attach it back up there. As there were three half-grown leopards in her bubble, oxygen depleted at a more rapid rate, making her a little oxygen deficient by now. Patting the bubble, Blair called out, Caspian? The instant he heard this, he knew what was the issue. He set down the water wheel immediately and swam over. Can't breathe? I'll blow a new bubble for you right away. Blair shook her head. The lack of oxygen combined with the fatigue made her feel sleepy. Panting, she said, take me back up. Okay. Caspian carried her bubble and shook his fishtail as he swam towards the surface. Over 200 males gathered around the waterhole, licking each other's wounds. Blair floated from the water surface and caught sight of Roger right away. <laughs> 